Luoyang, capital of the Eastern Han Dynasty, 183 AD. One freezing winter night, some figures rushed from the shadows into the biting wind. They quickly scribbled something on the wall of the Prime Minister's residence before vanishing back into the darkness. When dawn broke, the guards on patrol were shocked. On the outer wall of every ministry in the city, two characters were written prominently in white. Jatsu. Not even an immediate manhunt throughout the capital could stop a peasant's uprising from sweeping across all of China. The wheat is green, the barley ripe. Only women remain in the fields. Our men go on foot to fight the Hu, while officials buy horses and carts. Alas, who dares to complain? This popular ballad from the late Eastern Han tells how women had to work in the fields while their men served in the army far to the northwest. Even local officials had to go and fight, but at least they could ride on horseback. People felt bitter but had to swallow their tears and hold their tongues. The Hu barbarians mentioned in the ballad were the Qiang tribes of the northwest. Rural men were often conscripted to battle the barbarians. Why then did the people of the late Eastern Han dynasty feel so bitter about it? During the latter years of the first century AD, the Eastern Han army had overcome the mighty Xiongnu, the Huns. Their victories were recorded on the rocks of Mount Yanran in the northern desert. However, the Han army had not won a decisive battle against the northwestern Chung tribes. The fighting went on throughout the second century AD. The wars against the Qiang became a heavy burden for the Eastern Han court, and its subjects suffered immensely. Men spent their whole lives away fighting. Women and children toiled in the fields, and taxation was high to support the huge military expenditure. Besides the impact of warfare, the problem of land annexation became increasingly acute. The rich were amassing land, while the poor went without roofs over their heads. To make matters worse, years of calamities and pestilence reduced many people to homeless beggary. Like dr Internal refugees have figured in many uprisings in Chinese history. One of them was the Red Eyebrows Uprising in 18 AD at the end of the Western Han Dynasty. But the refugee problem facing Eastern Han was even more serious. These displaced people were not merely seeking food. They were also driven by religious beliefs. In Dabai village, Guangzhou County, Hebei province, there is a 600 square meter pit 
with a deity's temple on its western side. Apart from a few elderly women, hardly anyone comes to worship nowadays. But late in the eastern Han, a plague was spreading across the central plains and many people were dying of hunger and cold. Victims would visit this sacred water pit and the temple to receive treatment from a sorcerer. The sorcerer told the suffering throng that he was the great teacher of the way of great peace and that the magic water he offered could save the lives of those who confessed their wrongdoings and prayed before him. He charged the poor nothing, while the rich paid whatever they wished. Many were healed. Dying patients miraculously recovered. The news spread like wildfire, driving ever more people to seek out the great teacher in person. Uh, Tian Zhang Zhao was from Julu in Hebei province. He founded the Taiping Dao, the way of great peace during the 170s. Within a decade, the self-styled great teacher had accumulated over 100,000 followers. With pestilence and social corruption rampant, Zhang Zhao offered cures using magic water and spells based on traditional medical practices. This convinced the desperate crowds who became fervent believers in his magical treatments. When Zhang Zhao's magic water ran out, he asked his disciples to build a temple. He claimed that at his invitation, the deity would move into it and give the pit water a magic touch. He promised the visitors that when they drank the water, they would be healed. No one at the Eastern Han court imagined that these bowls of water covered with ashes signaled the end of the dynasty. Zhang Zhao attributed his magic water's healing power to an early Taoist classic, Taiping Qingling Shu, or Scriptures of the Great Peace. It explained how society should be governed in accordance with the theories of yin and yang and wu xing, or the five interacting elements of nature. While advocating self-reliance and frugality as the way to a peaceful world, the book was mainly devoted to wizardry and soothsaying. Zhang Zhao found a copy during the reign of Emperor Jing, he studied the scriptures and put forward his own ideas on how to reach ultimate peace. Previously, the book had been presented to two Han emperors. The first time, its presenter was executed. The second time, the book was shelved. But for Zhang Zhao, it was the treasured basis of his doctrine of the way of great peace. Zhang 然后呢，他认为现在的东汉政府不是一个非常美好的
是一个非常，就是是一个末世，可以说。然后呢，呃，应该大家起来把它推翻。Guangzhou County, Hebei Province. Music of the Way of Great Peace has been performed here for over 1,800 years. It is now a folk art. Originally, the music took the form of chants aimed at arousing the spirit of the yellow turban rebels. Scriptures of the Great Peace criticized the exploitative ruling classes and foretold social change. In order to spread these doctrines among the people, Zhang Zhao adapted them into chants for his followers. These subsequently came to be played on pipes, flutes, and shing, or Chinese reed mouth organs. Chanting en masse helped Zhang Jia to inculcate in his followers ideas from the scriptures that favored equality and mutual love, and condemned exploitation. He also sent eight disciples to proselytize, or, as it was said, to educate the world with the way of virtues. The great teacher promised the people. A realm of peace if they joined him. Here, everyone would be equal under heaven. All would have food aplenty and live in harmony with the natural cycles. Zhang Zhao's promise of things to come brought one last hope to people only too used to exploitation by Eastern Han bureaucracy and social inequality. In those dark days, he shone a guiding light towards a new world of peace, security, equality, and harmony. Taiping清理书给东汉后期的广大人民群众提供了一幅理想的蓝图。这个理想两个方面，一方面在物质财富上啊能够得到平均，那么在精神财财富方面，清理太平清理书给他们描绘了一个非常美好的啊平等的社会
neither Lao Tzu nor Taoism could give the emperor a dragon son. But his continued worship of Lao Tzu helped to legitimize Taoist doctrines, which took root and spread rapidly among his subjects. It also opened the door for Taoist cults. Chinese 他们已经站在另一个历史层面上，运用所谓的现代意义上的迷信组织民众，实现其政治目的。Zhang Jia's way of great peace was not the only sect. Under the Eastern Han, Zhang Xiao had set up the way of five pecks of rice. New members had to contribute five pecks of rice, around 30 kilograms, to the group. Zhang Xiao was from Mount Wuzhe, at the northern foothills of the Bashan Mountains, amidst deep forests and burbling brooks. His organization was strictly managed like an independent realm on a par with the local government. Confucianism was no longer the undisputed ideology of the Han dynasty. But without a firm ideological foundation, the empire would fall into chaos. By the time of Emperor Ling's reign, from 168 to 189 AD, the way of great peace had spread across eight of the empire's 13 administrative provinces, or Zhou. Hundreds of thousands of followers were involved. Court eunuchs, royal guards, and ministers also joined Zhang Zhao's sect. Cultic Taoists would drive the Han dynasty to its doom. Then 他可以安抚百姓 Yang Tse was from Huaying County in Hongnong Prefecture, now in Chenqi Province. His grandfather, Yang Jun, and father, Yang Bing, were the most prestigious counselors of their time. He would now uphold the Yang family's reputation for integrity. The rapid growth of the Way of Great Peace was no secret. However, local officials often chose not to alert the imperial court for fear of losing their black hats, that is, their official positions. Yang Tzu recognized the potential threat to the empire and quickly warned the emperor of the danger the sect posed. He advised, dispatch the followers back whence they came. When they have been scattered, the sect will be left barren and powerless. Then its leaders can easily be destroyed. Yang Tzu's judgment was sound. As they say, without skin, to what does fur attach? What could Zhang Jia do without his myriad refugee followers? Yang Tse's solution offered the best way out of the situation. By taking the burning wood from under the cauldron, as the saying goes, they would attack the root of the problem. 
Unfortunately, Emperor Ling was more interested in cavorting with his concubines, and the court officials surrounding him chose to dodge the issue. Young Sir's astute advice to the Emperor was ignored until it was too late, and the danger to the Empire had become an actual threat. However, Yang Tse's advice did catch someone's attention. Zhang Zhao and his two brothers, Zhang Yang and Zhang Bao, speeded up their preparations. They divided their 360,000 strong forces into 36 units, the larger with more than 10,000 followers, the smaller with six or 7,000. Above them all, Zhang Zhao styled himself as General of Heaven, Zhang Bao as General of the Earth, and Zhang Liang as general of the people. Uh,当时这种那个管理体制哈,如果地方有了问题,就会有问责机制。183 AD was a year of abnormal weather. A summer drought withered the crops. The winter was extremely cold. In the north, the wells froze over. According to the Confucian mysticism common at the time, a calamity was about to strike the Han Empire. A ballad did the rounds. The blue heaven is dead. The yellow heaven will take its place. When the year is Jatsa, the whole world will prosper. And on the wall of every official residence in the capital, shadowy figures daub the name of the first year in the 60-year cycle. Jatsa. One of Zhang Jia's favorite assistants, Ma Yuan Yi, was the leader of a large unit. He led the followers from Jinzhou and Yangzhou along the Yangtze River to gather in Yecheng City. He then traveled secretly to the capital to organize a pincer attack as part of the rebellion. The date was set for Jiaozi Day, the 5th of April, 184 AD. But the rebellion almost failed before Zhang Zhao had even completed his plans. Ma Yuan's disciple, Tan Zhou, took fright and betrayed the forthcoming rebellion to government officials. Shocked, the court immediately proclaimed martial law over the capital. The city gates of Luoyang were closed. More than a thousand Way of Peace followers were arrested and Ma Yuan Yi was torn apart by five chariots. Even the decadent Emperor Ling finally realized the seriousness of the situation. He issued an edict for Zhang Zhao to be apprehended as soon as possible. With no time to waste, Zhang Zhao acted immediately. He dispatched messengers overnight, calling on all. The Han dynasty trembled to the sound of their roaring voices. The official Ying Sha recorded what he saw. The riot broke out across eight Zhou. The sky turned red from burning smoke. Officials were slaughtered and their blood ran like rivers. Emergency in Jizhou. Emergency in Yingchuan. Emergency in Yangyang. Messengers galloped on horseback from all directions towards Luoyang. Alarmed, the emperor called in his ministers to devise countermeasures. 
He appointed his brother-in-law, Herr Jin, as commander-in-chief of the city garrison to barricade eight passes leading to the capital. At the same time, the commander of the northern forces, Lu Zhe, was to assail the Yellow Turban army from the north. Wang Fu Sung, commander of the left flank, and Zhu Jun, commander of the right, were to attack from the south. The imperial court called on local officials and wealthy landlords to raise troops against the rebels. The government's own forces totaled only 100,000 men, but they were well trained. Their three commanders, Wang Fu Sung, Zhu Jun, and Liu Zhe, were experienced generals. Against this, the Yellow Turban Army had easily gathered hundreds of thousands of people, but their fighters were mostly elderly, children and women. They were unprepared and poorly organized. Their scattered forces could easily be picked off one by one. At this critical juncture, Zhang Jia fell ill and died. His brother, Zhang Yang, took on the leadership. But the Yellow Turban's morale was the worst casualty of all. In October 184 AD, Wan Fu Sung's troops joined the Northern Imperial forces and cornered the Yellow Turban army. At the end of the month came the final battle between the government forces and Zhang Yang's 30,000 rebels. The Yellow Turban Rebellion was crushed. 30,000 rebels fell to the sword, and 50,000 more drowned in the Qing River while trying to flee. In November, General of the Earth Zhang Bao was killed in Xia Chu Yang, and 100,000 defeated rebels surrendered. Mount Lingxiao, 35 kilometers from Xingtai City, Hebei Province. Its lofty slopes are covered with trees. Even the locals are hardly aware that 1800 years ago, the Yellow Turban Army was stationed here. Hidden in the deep forests, this octagonal well, a water dungeon for traitors and stone tablets are evidence that the Yellow Turban Army was present in this area. At the foot of the mountain, performances that originated during the Yellow Turban Rebellion are given at festival time. Descendants of the Yellow Turbans have created lively folk arts such as Tai Huang Gang, a parade float in memory of the Yellow Turban sympathizers who would carry food in trunks for the rebel fighters. Rebel chants have been transformed into soul-stirring music, such as the Great Peace drumming and the Way of Great Peace music. The bravery of the rebels who shook an empire lives on in stories passed down by word of mouth. Xianqing 其他的组织所利用。我想这也是东汉后期的历史，啊，留给我们留下的一个历史的经验和教训。At the eastern gateway in Changsha City, Hunan Province, a set of Han bamboo slip documents was unearthed in 2004. They described how the Yellow Turban Rebellion not only dismantled the social order, 
but also gave rise to an economic crisis for the Eastern Han Empire. Chu 也空时了 In the records, the magistrate of Lingxiang County in what was then Changsha Prefecture reported that the granaries and the treasury are empty. It was the same with the central government. Emperor Ling had been pained by the need to donate his own money and horses in order to suppress the Yellow Turban's uprising. No sooner had the war ended, however, and he sent his eunuchs to extort wealth for him. To replenish the treasury, Emperor Ling even sold official ranks and titles. Initially, only lower ranks were put up for sale, but eventually, senior ranks were also placed on the market. In order to gain a position or a promotion, scholars or local officials had to pay a fortune. 灵异的时候有一个师徒相当于丞相这个人叫崔烈崔烈的师徒这个位置就是从汉灵帝那个地方买来的崔烈回家以后问他的儿子叫崔军他说我用钱买得了这个官社会上对我是什么评价崔烈的儿子崔军这个人还比较正直他说啊大家对你评价很不好说你的身上有铜臭我们今天讲铜臭这个词就是从这儿来的为什么东汉后期社会矛盾那么激烈除了广大的一般的农民普通百姓政府的
解决这个燃眉之急。但实际上，在这个战争过程中和战争以后哈，宦官和这个官僚集团之间的矛盾哈，呃，依然没有得到解决啊。那么，呃，像黄甫松、像孺子这样一些。在正阳黄巾起义过程中立下赫赫战功的人，依然没有摆脱宦官的恐吓和这个迫害。那么在过去呢，好像是可以这个需要忍耐哈。那么到现在，就未必是那样的。It is said to kill a rat on the table, you may have to smash a plate. Dealing with the eunuchs would certainly have come at a high price. But failing to do so led to a political crisis. Why are men of integrity being persecuted? People asked. The world must have been turned upside down. And the rebellion, although officially crushed, rumbled on with sporadic small-scale peasant riots for more than 20 years. To suppress them, Emperor Ling allowed local governments to strengthen their own armies. Predictably, some local officials turned against the central government. Many local tyrants whose armies had fought the Yellow Turban rebels became warlords and proclaimed their own sovereignty. As well as the warlord Yuan Shao and the aristocrat Dong Zhou, three men who were relatively insignificant at the time, Cao Cao, Sun Jian, and Liu Bei, also entered the fray. 黄巾起义啊，它特别像一场大地震。它主体哈、啊、虽然被这个扑灭了，但是它这个小规模的这个力量仍然存在，而且实际情况从后面记载来看，规模并不小。比如说曹操后来收编的这个秦州兵，还有这个袁绍啊，在河北啊也收编了一部分。呃，这个张飞燕他的黑山军力量也是比较庞大的。In comparison with Dong Zhuo and Yuan Shao, Cao Cao had little influence in the wake of the Yellow Turban Rebellion. History would offer him another opportunity. In 188 AD, as many as a million members of the remnant Yellow Turban Army rose up again in Qingzhou and Shuzhou. The governor of Yanzhou was assassinated, and Cao Cao took up his position. He negotiated with the Yellow Turban rebels while fighting them. A few months later, 300,000 Yellow Turban soldiers joined Cao Cao's army. With their families, they increased the population under Cao Cao's rule by one million. Cao Cao selected a hundred thousand soldiers as elite troops and named them the Qingzhou Army. He then organized their relatives who had brought their own plows and cattle to work in the local government fields. Their harvest would provide for the army. The Qingzhou Army became an important military force for Cao Cao as he went on to increase his power and expand his influence. The Yangtze River rushes to the east, carrying all the heroes into the sea," wrote the Ming Dynasty poet Yang Shun more than a millennium later. For this would be an era of burning ships, gleaming spears, and armored horses, of bravery, battles of wits, and much bloodshed. This Huang Jin Qi, he failed. 虽然没有把这个东汉王朝哈、啊、给这个推翻了，但他对东汉王朝这个老大帝国他的打击是非常非常大的。那么后来东汉的灭亡，乃至三国就这种这个鼎立情况出现，都和黄巾起义有直接或者间接的关系。Helped push the Han Dynasty to the verge of chaos. The empire was in dire straits. As the Eastern Han court lost its grip, groups of risk takers charged in to play a history-making role. 
The Han Dynasty, China's first enduring empire, achieved many great things in its glory days. However, the 400-year-old empire finally came to an end in 2020 AD when its last emperor, Xian, was forced to relinquish supreme power.